Well, um, hello everybody. Um, today I'm going to talk about component-driven design and development. I am Cristina Chumillas. You can find me on Twitter as, as Chumillas or Secrina on Drupal.org on, on, or on IRC. I'm designer and front-end developer at Imbra, a Drupal shop based in Barcelona. I come from the graphic design world. I'm not a developer. Uh, I wasn't a developer, but I met Drupal about five years ago when I became freelance, and I've been doing Drupal since then. Well, what are we going to talk about on this uh, session? I'm going to talk about components, what they are, and why uh, can they be useful about design systems, about CSS methodologies and what they are, about the style guides and how can they help, and of course, how can we implement everything on Drupal. Uh, but first, let me say a couple of things about web projects. I'm pretty sure all, all of you are, uh, know the typical waterfall project that is, uh, uh, that everything is done, uh, everything uh, starts when the previous phase is finished. For example, you don't start the design until the planning is already done. You don't start the development until the design is completely finished. You don't start the theming or the testing until the previous phase is everything finished. And finally, you deploy everything, the full project. On the other hand, there's uh, the agile methodology, the agile, the agile workflow that uh, let you develop a group of features and you release a group of features every sprint. So you can be developing at the same time that the designer is working. So you can uh, be doing several things at the same time. Another thing that I would like to remind is that a uh, web project, the lifetime of a web project, uh, never ends when you uh, deploy your project, when you launch the, the website. After it, there's the maintenance moment, and you, if you haven't had, uh, if you haven't written a good code, it will be really hard to find it. It will be really hard to maintain everything. And another, th another thing that it, really will, uh, it will be really good to, to remember is that uh, since now, uh, most of us uh, have been using uh, static deliverables. We deliver Photoshop, PDF, PNG images, but they are not responsive. They don't have interactions. At the end, they are not on the browser, so they are not the real thing the, 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 the visitor of the website will see at the end. So we, we should think if the client really want a Photoshop because they are just used to that, because they are used that uh, it's a standard, but it's not the, the best option. But well, how can we improve all that things with components? What is a component? A component is any predefined object usable across multiple pages. It can be also known as widget, block, module. Um, uh, it's an independent entity, and it, it has its own meaning. It has its own, its own part. For example, in that case, it has a title. It has a list. It has a read more button but it's independent from the other parts of the, that will be in the, in the, in the page. Um, why components are an improvement, an improvement for us? Because may, uh, components uh, can make systems modular, and a system to be modular, it must have interchangeable parts. And what makes a component modular? First, we need a standard and shared de uh, design to across the, the, the project, across the website. It means that you have to take it into account when you are designing. You have to design thinking on components. It's really, really important. It, it comes from the beginning of the project. 
it also have uh, it also needs to have a centralized code because uh, you are using uh, if you have centralized code centralized code you only w will use once that code you don't will write code the same code again and again and again and then you will have to maintain several pieces of content you just have to uh, use one of them and another thing is that it should be controlled via system, via the system, not the user. The, the user shouldn't control it. And it should have customizable, customizable options. The user, for example, should be able to, have to decide if it's a list. Yeah, I want, for example, two things, two items in the list, or three items in the list, for example. It's really, really important that we give some tools to the user, but not the com a complete control to it. To it. Um, here we have an example. As I was saying, uh, we can have the same component. In that case, uh, is a testimonial. A testimonial. It's another real uh, example. Uh, here we have um, a testimonial with one uh, uh, item, for example, or with three items, depending on the case or in the place we are uh, putting it. For example, here, uh, as you can see, there's the same component on the sidebar, we only need one item because it's smaller. It will not need more attention. But for example, if we want to put it uh, in, the, in, the, in the central part of the page because we want more importance to that component, the user can decide if he uses, uh, for example, one of the uh, items in, on it. And if you have to remember one slide of this presentation is that one. We are not designing pages. We are designing systems of components. This is the most important one. Sorry. So, design systems. I'm pretty sure uh, some of you are already know what's that. Uh, because they are all in the range in the design world nowadays. What is a design system? A design system is everything, everything that makes up your project, your product. Everything. It means typography, layouts, uh, grids, colors, icons, of course, components, but even coding conventions. That things are also important on a, on a design system because everything makes up your, proje your product and everyone needs to know the same thing. Here you have an example of uh, a design system. Here you can uh, see a main navigation bar, you can see some buttons, some uh, pager, a breadcrumb. It all uh, have the same style. Here you can see another example of different components in that case. They, also, they all have the same colors the same typo typography, same titles, same styles, and if you put any of them in any, in, in any part of your uh, website, they will have the same style. But why should we use design systems in our projects? Because it's reusable work. We only have to do things once. If we use, if you reuse our work, we will be able to have more efficient projects and with efficient projects, we have large scale ready code, so big projects. We will be able to have and manage big, big projects. But also, everybody will know where, where is everything. You, if someone uh, gets into your project in the middle of uh, the development, he will know where he has to find anything. And also, it integrates multidisciplinary workflow, the tester, the developer, the designer. It will, re it will be really, really good for everybody in the project. Well, um, inside the design system wall, uh, some, time, uh, some years ago, some time ago, appeared uh, the atomic design concept. It was, uh, it's a methodology, it was, uh, uh, Create, created or <coughs> invented by Brad Frost. I don't know if some of you already know who is Brad Frost. He's a, uh, yeah, because he's a really important, uh, he's a really good uh, front-end developer. He has a blog. He also writes usually, and he was going to launch a, 
launch a, a book about that. What he says is that uh, when you are building a, a design system, when you are designing your uh, website, you don't have to start with pages. We, we should, you should start with the smaller pieces of your website, with atoms. And then you should uh, put together atoms and build mole molecules. And putting together molecules, then you build organisms. With different organisms together, you, you build templates, and finally you build uh, pages. But you don't start with pages. Here we have an example. We have a level, some levels with some inputs. If we put them together, we have a form. It will be a, uh, the typical form. It will, ha it will be a molecule. If we put them, that molecule inside an organism, it, we will have, for example, uh, comment, the comments um, uh, uh, organism. It will have, in that case, we have the form. We have another comment already sent. So uh, it will be a, an organism that you can put inside the template. For example, it will, it will be a node template with the comments at the bottom. So here you have the template. And finally, you add there all the things that the other parts of the page already have. And you finally have the page. But you start on the smaller piece, and that's a key. And the big question is, when should we introduce that workflow in our projects? Well, it's not the, the, it's not, there's no uh, best option. But for sure, as soon as you can. You, you should implement it in your project as soon as you can. For example, on wireframes, uh, it's a really good moment to introduce uh, the components uh, way of thinking. Uh, in that, uh, on wireframes, we can choose between static wireframes or HTML wireframes. Uh, if we choose uh, static wireframes, the problem is that they are full of, of uh, they are abstractions. They are not uh, the real thing that the final user or the customer will see at the end. Because you are not in the browser. You are, for example, in a PDF or in an image. So you can't click there. Uh, they are full of, of assumptions. For, for example, um, you design a, a wireframe. Uh, you put there uh, the typical main menu, but you don't develop a drop-down menu because you think it's not needed. But the client, the client uh, doesn't see it. And he, he thinks that it will be a drop-down menu. But he, has a, he can't test it, so he won't know or he won't remember about asking it. And at the end, you will have the website ready for lunch, and he will say, where's my drop-down menu? Huh? No, no, there's no drop-down. We haven't designed it even on wireframes or on design. Ah, but I want a drop-down menu. Everybody has a drop-down menu. So it's full of, of uh, uh, static wireframes are full of, of assumptions. There can be problems with that. And also, they are never complete because you won't design everything in a, in a in a static wireframe. On the other hand, you have the HTML wireframes, and the good thing on that is that they get uh, quicker into the browser because you are doing it on, in the browser. Also, they reinforce the notion that you are creati creating a website because you are doing it in a browser. They are also interactive because you are in a browser. They will be as interactive as you, as you want they are. They also allow annotations. They, that's something that sometimes uh, uh, it concerns us, that we won't be able to annotate, annotate something there. They also let it. And also, they will be the, ba the base of the final project, product. And it's, it, it's really important. OK, if you haven't implemented components on your, um, on your uh, wireframes process, you can do it on your design. Uh, on your design, you can have um, the typical static deliverables, like Photoshop, images, PDF. Or you can have HTML deliverables. You can have prototypes. Uh, if you decide, if you choose prototypes, uh, you can uh, design in the browser. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that you have to start with a white blank page, HTML white 
blank page. No, it's not that. You are, uh, if, you are a design, if you are a designer, you maybe are thinking, oh, I can't start with a blank HTML page. It means that you really have to uh, use uh, Photoshop or whatever you use in the planning uh, phase, in the research, research phases. And then you make your composition in the browser. What does that mean? That you make decisions in the browser. And that's really, really, really important because you will decide when the, uh, the breakpoint will come because you are doing it. You are having it just right in front of you. So you will decide it's, it looks good or no, it doesn't look good. And of course, they are reusable work. The developer will know how do you want your output, how do you want, what, which classes do you want, which um, levels do you want, for example. So it's really, really, really useful. Sorry. OK, another important part about components are CSS methodologies because they let us um, uh, make a scalable and maintainable front-end code. And it's really, really, really important to apply it in our projects. On one hand, we have uh, object-oriented CSS. It has already some years. It's based on the uh, object-oriented pro programming paradigm. Uh, what it says is that uh, your object should do one thing well. It should, be, it should have only one responsibility and one class for that responsibility. And it should, have, it should be focused on the separation of concerns because every section should have its own classes. Uh, this is an example, the typical example of, of, of an object. It will be media for the, the media object. So if you want to um, uh, theme anything inside the media object, you just have to uh, use, you, ju ju you just use uh, the media and whatever is inside. So that's the only thing you have to take into account with object-oriented CSS. Uh, BEM, block element modifier, it's a naming methodology. Um, it's an abstraction. What it does is, for example, you have a component or a block or a module or widget, whatever you want to call it, and um, you put a name on, on him. Uh, you say site search, for example, and you use the, the element to uh, modify, modify that class. For example, if you want to uh, put a field inside the, the site search, you will, do, you will do site search underscore underscore field. What that does is that when you call it from your CSS code, code you are calling it directly to, uh, you are not using site search as a uh, space field. You are using directly site search underscore underscore field. Or for example, if you are modifying uh, your site search, search per, because you have uh, two of them, here for example you have the full one, then the modifiers goes with uh, dash dash full. That's a really uh, important way and a real improvement to use directly that class to uh, style everything on your CSS or SAS. Here, for example, we have another, we have uh, an example of uh, an HTML output. It will be the block name, uh, and you, have, you can have a wrapper that it's also something related to the, to the, to the block. Then we, we will have block name underscore underscore wrapper, or the title will be block name underscore underscore title. It's really easy to implement, and it really helps a lot. Believe me, it really helps. Then on the other hand, we have SMACs. It's more like a style guide than a rigid CSS uh, framework. What it does is um, recommends you how you should divide your files. Uh, for example, you should have a, a base file with everything uh, like um, font style, uh, the size of the, of the font, um, the, the, the color of the links, the margins of the list. It will be with the base, for example. Then you, can, uh, you should have another uh, file with the layout, 
and everything that is related to the layout, for example, two columns, uh, three columns, responsing things, whatever, it will be in the layout. Then you will have the module or components uh, in, another in another folder or a file. And finally, the state. So what you do is divide uh, the, the files and you put everything in that in its uh, part. Then, another really, really useful thing for working on uh, with uh, components is having a style guide. If you haven't um, introduced uh, components earlier in your project, product, in your uh, project, I really recommend you that you do it on uh, on the style guide moment. Most of you, I'm pretty sure all of you are uh, sometimes have seen uh, the typical uh, style guide, the PDF style guide that someone's deliver you with the uh, design. And today, it, what it does, it visualize your code and represent this as a UE component toolkit. It's a, a, a style guide is a documentation of a design system. Uh, it's just a list of about everything that you will have in your website. For example, here we have our colors. Then we will have all our uh, colors inside that, that style guide. Here is an example from government.uk. Uh, and you have a list of all the, all the colors here. And you have a list of all the titles, and another list for all the components. Why should we use uh, style guides on our workflow? because they improve the user experience. For example, imagine that you have a website and you have, you have a, there you have a help link, then you click on that, uh, it opens a pop-up. And in any other place, it doesn't open a pop-up, it goes to another place. For the user, it's not good that. If you have an, a style guide that it says how it should like the, the help button, what should happen every time you uh, click on a help button, if you will have the same experience across all the website. And it's really, really important for the user. Another thing that really helps is that it, yeah, that it makes easier the onboarding of new team members because everybody who knows where they have to find everything, everybody knows where's everything, and they know where to find anything that they already don't know. Of course, it makes uh, efficient or design or development, and it makes really easier the testing. And it's really important because the tester uh, sometimes doesn't know where to find the, the, the good code because it has changed a, 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 a during the development, the standard world. And if you have a style guide, he will know that, that the thing that there is in the style guide, it will be the good one. So it will be easier to, to know if it's fine or no. So if we have even war, a waterfall or agile project or whatever is your workflow, for each piece, for each feature, you have to go from the wireframes to design. After the devel uh, You have to, have to develop it and then launch it to production. If you want to make any change, you have to go back go to design, design it again, develop again, and go, go to production again. What if you introduce here in style guide? Well, you have to design, develop, production. Oh no, we have to change something. You go back to design, you design everything, then you go back to development and you say to the developer, hey, please, update the style guide, don't forget it, it's really important. But you are on time. You are not on time. You have a lot of rush, and you forget about about the style guide. Well, style guides uh, that are, are out of date are really useless. If we were, if we are not going to have an up uh, no, uh, an up to date style guide, it won't work. At least at the end of the of the project, it will be it won't it won't work. So. Style guide driven development. It's uh, something that really solves that. Style guides, it means that uh, there are style guides that are generated directly from the definition resources. For example, from your SAS. If you are using SAS, you can generate your style guides from there, for example.
What we are using uh, on our uh, projects is Sky SS Nile Style Sheets. It's something that it's already launched with uh, the Zen module, the new launch Zen 6. I don't know if some of you already used it. It's a really a useful tool. Uh, it's an automated style guide, and it's a documentation specification and a style guide format inside your SAS that you just put it on, on the SAS, and it creates automatically uh, and extracts everything uh, and creates a style guide for you. I'm going to explain it. For example, you have what I was saying uh, just before about the SMACs. You have your, ba your base code, your base styles. Then you have another folder with the layout. Then you have the folder with components, for example. And we go to the pager component. Uh, you, have the, uh, you have the file, uh, uh, in that case, uh, we use a SAS. Then you have a SAS file. And in the same folder, you have an HBS file. I'm going to explain it. In your pagers, for ex in your pager SAS, uh, you have that code. You have the name of the of the component. Then you have the markup. You link here to the pager dot HBS a file that is in your uh, in your folder in the same folder. And you say it here that that component will be inside components dot navigation dot folder. And that's all. Then, of course, you have to make your code, your style there. And then you create that uh, nice um, HTML. So you just put it inside the pagers.hbs uh, file. You run the Gulp uh, automated thing, and you have the pager on your style guide. It will run automatically. What does it mean? Is that you are creating your code, you are styling, and at the same time, you are, bu you are building the style guide. So it won't be uh, out of date, never, unless you are doing it intentionally. If you want more uh, information about style guides, uh, you can go to styleguides.io. There are a lot of resources there, uh, articles, books, whatever. So don't worry, there's a lot of information. And well, how we do everything, all that things in Drupal, because as you may know, Drupal is not uh, theming friendly. It's not uh, DVD is friendly or classity is friendly. So we have uh, two general approaches. We can grab components, or we can change the full markup, we, or we can do both of them. But the, the, there are that general approaches. Uh, if, uh, if we want to change our uh, components uh, to our Drupal components adapted to uh, components itself that you might, might have on your style guide or in your prototypes, you can choose uh, three ways. You can, use, do, you can do it by code, you can do it by through display suite, or you can use panels. If you are going to you do it in using code, you can use field formatters. You can use preprocess and process functions, but you have to know how everything works and which one are you need to use. And of course, you can use hook page alter, hook form alter, hook node view alter, whatever. Or you can create your custom functions. But it's you have to know a lot of things. Uh, you have to have a lot of knowledge about Drupal theming and Drupal front-end. On the other hand, you have Display Suite. I really like it. Uh, it's really easy. You, can, you just have view modes, and you uh, design, your, you customize your view modes, and you reuse your view modes. And here you have a component. So you are, we, are, you can, we can reuse it. But also, Display Suite has field templates uh, on the Display Suite Extras module. And if we do it, we can change all the markup of, uh, from all uh, fields. We can cho uh, choose the expert mode, and here we can put there, we can change the markup, we can change the classes it, uh, it, output, it outputs, 
So we can have a lot of uh, control over our uh, um, HTML at the end. Sorry. And finally, we have panels. I really hated panels some, some years ago because I, th I thought it was a huge, huge, huge module that really just give a lot of problems. But uh, on lately, I've re I, I discovered that it's really, really useful for components. On one hand, you can uh, use uh, custom panes. Uh, custom panes, or it can be also known as set tools, uh, content type, or plugin. What you do is you create, it's like creating a block. Uh, if you have you ever created a block uh, programmatically, programmatically, my English is not really good, sorry. Uh, you just create uh, the, 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 you just use the function uh, hook themes admin info, or, uh, sorry, the, you just use the, uh, the function uh, hook admin info, and the other one hook uh, render, and you just create your plugin, and you will have it on your uh, panel's interface to choose it, and it will be created for you, so it will, it will have the output you want. On the other hand, you can create uh, custom templates. You can use, uh, you can create a panel, a, a pane on your interface inside Drupal and just change the, the, the template. Another really easy way is just adding a class to a, pa a panel pane and then just theme everything inside it. It's really, really easy. You just have to do it on the preprocess uh, in on the preprocess function, preprocess panel pane function. This function is the key. You can do it on the template.php from your on your theme or whatever. And then you uh, you in any in, in any case in any uh, for in that case uh, my pane name, for example, you choose that, and in that case you use. Uh, the, the classes you want, in that case is my, my custom play, class, and then your pane will have it. And you will be able to style whatever you want, however, however you want. Another thing that panels give us is uh, mini panels. Uh, it's really easy because you do everything through the interface, it's plug and play, and you just uh, add some different um, uh, in that case, we have uh, social media icons. You can have any other thing inside here. And you have a, a mini panel, then you can add it wherever you use your pane, in a, in a, in a panel page or in, a, in panelizer or whatever. And then you have a grouper thing that you can u reuse, whatever, in your, in your project. And finally, panels give us also context. Uh, context can is, for example, if you are in uh, content type, uh, if you are an, in an article, you will have, for example, a, th a list with three items. Or if I am on a panel, or if in a, an article or in a simple page, you can have, for example, five uh, news, five li last news. So. Yeah, depend, depending on the context, the, the panel, the content can change and it will help us. So, um, that's all, that's everything about components and I think I'm on time. So if you want to learn a little bit more about uh, any other related things with that. You can go to other <coughs> two sessions related. You can go to Drupal gener Generated Markup. It's not your friend. Use a style guide, so they will explain a little bit more of that. And another one I, I recommend you is Prototypes and Drupal from designing the browser to implementing custom templates. So thank you for coming and thank you to MSF that let me use their, uh, the examples from our customer, and if you have any question, that's all. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, I have a question about class naming. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm actually a, a, a back-end developer, so I'm not really a front-end mm -hmm. person. 
um, but I talk a lot to front-end people and um, <coughs> so I come from a very structured way of working and they have a less structured way of working. Sometimes they have trouble coming up with a uh, naming convention for all of the classes that, uh, is, uh, that doesn't go out of control. So I wonder if you have any tips for naming conventions inside BEM, for example. Yeah. He's asking if, uh, what's the best way for the naming conventions because he's back in there and he says that he usually have troubles to go to, to a common way of naming. I would recommend you use BEM. Uh, BEM is uh, what I was saying, uh, a really good and easy way to, to put classes. And uh, it helps you hold you uh, put a class, but it doesn't say to you which is the name of the component. You have to decide it. And the most, I think, the, the clever way to decide it is to abstract as much as you can your uh, component, and to think all the all, all the times it will appear. If, for example, you have a call to action button. Uh, think where it will go placed, and when you have all the all the all the situations, you will have it. Then decide, not just on the first time it appears. Just have a uh, a, a big image of it. Hi, next one. Um, Hi. I was just wondering because I was using KSS on one of my last projects, yeah. and the thing was that um, throughout the project, sometimes. Um, you want to change the markup. Yeah. But if you're already in the project, you constantly have to change Twig, and then you're un also maintaining the HBS file. Do you have a better way, or do you maintain those two files where you keep the markup in sync, or can you, is there a better way of doing it? Or No, uh, we, we also use I HBS, because uh, I think, if, at least for us, is the, the easier way, because we, we, we try to keep the, the good one as the HVS. Then all the other ones should vary from that, but that's a, the, that's a good one. Because otherwise you are developing something and you only you know which, which is the good one. If you, and if you don't update your HVS, then you can have that troubles. Okay. I don't know, we always try to use the, the HVS. Or having at least two, two examples on HVS, but there is the central, the central thing, the, cen the central component. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Any other question? Do you have a document at the higher level where you work with your client and say, you can't design a new page, you need to work from these components, and these components work in this way, and this is why we use them. Do you, do you actually take it up so you don't actually go back to the design phase? You just say, here's our style guide, here's a catalog, please choose from the, av the available options. You mean, how do you say that to your cli you client? Yes, the client. So that they don't get to design, because the worst thing with a big site is, oh yeah, I want to design a new page. But actually what you're going to say is, well, here are the components. Um, can you please choose from the ones we've already made? Well, <laughs> that's a good question. You never have, uh, well, it's, n you, that's not so usual to have that good client that understands everything and when you suggest something he says okay I'm going to change my my mind and I'm going to do that that's really 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 difficult to do it but I think that at the end you have to choose that clients that really listen to you because they want to improve also and at the end if you I think the, the, the best way to say to a client hey uh, that's uh, the best way doing things with, with components is showing them any, an, uh, any example of any other customer and taking maybe if they already designed anything, say, okay, just let me check, take some piece of that and let me move it to any other place. Does it work here? No? Okay, we, call, we could do it work. So. I don't know, you should try to convince, but it's really difficult usually. But if you go with a prototype or with a, an HTML wireframes, usually when they s see that they can touch whatever it is, it's usually it's really good. Any other question? No? Thank you.